Welcome back everyone at War Eagle. My name is Eddie Orantes and I'm the Director of Business Operations for the Office of Alumni Affairs at Auburn University. And for the next 30 minutes, your host of 18 minutes and 56 seconds, the Auburn Alumni Association Speaker Series. We're engaging all alumni more than ever. And we thank you for that. You can find all of our shows by going to aub.ie forward slash 1856 series. We also love to hear from you. So ask questions and interact by leaving comments on our Facebook page. We'll do our best to answer them in the half hour that we have together. In today's show, we will hear from Heidi, Dr. Heidi Wright, class of 2020. She'll be discussing the life and legacy of her mother, Josetta Britton Matthews, class of 66. It's important to note that Ms. Matthews was the first black faculty member at Auburn University and the Auburn Alumni Association just named its first need-based scholarship in memory of her. We will also hear from Dramir Woods, sophomore, actually junior now, in aerospace engineering and recipient of various scholarships. To both of you, I welcome you to the show. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you for joining us. It is exciting uh, to learn about what the, what the influence and the impact that scholarship has in our student life cycle. And I think the most appropriate thing to do, uh, Dr. Wright, would be to learn about your mother and the impact that she, uh, will, that both Auburn had on her as well as what she uh, impact made on, on Auburn. So would you please share with us, bring us into your life, tell us about your mother. Okay, uh, my mom was born, she was an army brat. So she was born at Fort Benning in uh, Columbus, Georgia. Uh, she was educated in Indiana University during her early years. Uh, was uh, I talked with my mom about that uh, one day, and she was explaining things to me about how it was when she, you know, her upbringing, her early years, mm -hmm. and she was um, the only African American student at her school. So, uh, and she ended up going to college when she was actually seventeen years old, because. Um, she started first grade when she was five, no, four, five, five years old. And I, I just I was like, mommy, huh? Because she's like, Heidi, everybody's always older than I am that she went to school with. And she said, when it was time for her to go to kindergarten, she hadn't had that no, first grade, she hadn't had that birthday. And the lady at the school told my grandmother, she said, if she behaves, I will let her stay. <laughs> so... Obviously she behaved and so that just continued and she graduated ahead of everyone else in her class throughout her you know, education. And um, she, so they moved to the South <clears throat> from Indiana when she was in high school, I do believe. And uh, maybe middle school, I think it was high school. But anyway, she went to private school here. She went to uh, Alabama State used to have a school, private school, and they called it Laboratory High. So she went to Laboratory High, Lab High, and uh, finished high school and then went back to Indiana to get her undergraduate degree. And so uh, I think her very, very first teaching job was like right there at the Georgia state line. And she got a job teaching music <laughs> to some young people. And uh, she ended up uh, getting uh, a job at Tuskegee, then Tuskegee Institute. Mm -hmm. So uh, her father urged her to go on and get her master's degree. And so she got her master's degree. She entered Auburn University on a fellowship. So it is befitting that now we've got a scholarship in her name because um, that you know she was a benefactor of of a fellowship so she so she was so she enrolled at auburn and when she graduated she said the cameras came to her and she didn't know why and they were like you know you're the first black person to graduate from auburn university so that's why she's looking surprised on that 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 was actually taken that day and she remembered that day and she was like Heidi, it was surely hot that day so <laughs> but uh you know it it wasn't unusual for her to be in a setting where she was the only black person. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and she, you know, she she met some resistance, I guess you could call it that, but 
it never deterred her. And, you know, she just went to another set of people and she's like, Heidi, um, she made a lot of friends. Mm -hmm. And she, she did have uh, support from her major professor at uh, Auburn University, Dr. Andrew Weaver. Um, to his credit, he made sure that she took classes from people who, I'm going to tell you just exactly how she said it, who weren't KKK. Mm -hmm. So um, things, you know, things worked. Um, and so uh, I do believe at that time, Auburn really was truly and honestly striving for diversity mm -hmm. as they are now. So um, what else would you like to know? Well, this and one, one thing that I think is important to note your mother w shared her transformative experience. She took on the challenge. And I'm interested to hear just where that came from innately. Why did she embrace education the way that she did? And where does she find the strength to continue to do what she's done? I'm sure she's influenced you because mm -hmm. now you have a doctorate as well. Yes. Um, but we'll, we'll, we'll get into that because I do wanna hear more about that aspect of your mother and your family. Mm -hmm. um, in the legacy that's, that's, you know, that's there in just a, a short minute. If you don't mind, I'd like to bring Jermir up and ask him a question. Yes. Jermir, you also um, received scholarships and your story is an amazing story. So would you mind sharing with us your Auburn story? Yes. So I am a Tuscaloosa, Alabama native. So I come from that area. <laughs> And um, generally, from there, uh, from the part of Tuscaloosa I come from, it's not common for people to uh, go to college as much. I'm a first-generation college student, and my father is the head of the household. Like, he's a single dad, taking care of everyone, you know, doing his best. And I have several other younger siblings as well. So he always told me, like, if you want to be successful, if you want to make something out of yourself, you can do anything you want to. And I wanted to attend college. I've just always been fascinated with flying and things of that nature. And I even played with little toys and spaceships when I was younger. That's what I grew up loving to do. Like for Christmas, I would be telling them, hey, I want a potato clock or something like that. I don't want all that other stuff. But being a first generation college student, um, from my community, it's it's really crazy. At the time, we didn't we weren't able to afford tutoring um, for ACT and things of that nature. So, since we were he was busy trying to put food on the table for all of us, being um, a single father, he also working two jobs. So I took it upon myself to work at McDonald's, and I saved all my paychecks, like each week and I put that towards ACT prep and ensuring that I did whatever I could to get in college into college and um unfortunately after applying to Alabama I was denied due to having a low ACT score when I talked to some representatives and I didn't want poverty or my lack of intellect to stop me from achieving my dreams of becoming an aerospace engineer so I worked, I would um, come home after school, I would go to football practice and all my various sports, then I would go to work after that. And I stay up at night, all night studying until I got to where I wanted to, not only to eventually be admitted into the number one school in the state of Alabama, but also receive full funding to attend this institution as well. And I mean, even to this day, since my dad wasn't given the opportunity to attend college like I was, he tells me, like, man, you're, re you're really living out this dream. Like, he wanted it as well, but he wasn't able mm -hmm. to because of certain circumstances. And he was like, you're not only living out your dream, you're living out my dream by completing yours as well. Mm -hmm. And my grandma and everybody just see me as, like, the neighborhood hero when I come back, so. Yeah, listen, I I'm sure you're proud, but I, I know your family and your community must be proud. 
Uh, you guys can't see it, those that are looking at this on Facebook Live, but I see Dr. Wright's face as she's <laughs> listening to Jameer. Uh, and, and I imagine that you're, you're looking at some of what you may have seen and or experienced yourself, Dr. Wright, in, at home. Um, the, the, there is one, one aspect that I'd like to ask both of you, and that is what scholarships and what mentorship means to you in the impact that it has, um, in particular scholarships, because that's what we're discussing today, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so, so what is that for you, Jameer? How has that helped you uh, through this journey that you're in? So as I stated, like with my dad being a single father and trying to take care of all the children in the house, there's no way whatsoever he would have been able to afford to send me off to college and um, my younger siblings as well. So having this scholarship, I mean, without it, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be here speaking to you all today. I'll probably end up still maybe working at McDonald's or doing things of that nature without the assistance of um, scholarships and just having those right people and those right connections and everyone in my life to guide me and tell me that they feel like this would be the appropriate next decision to make. It was really big for me. So I really thank the Auburn family for taking me in and providing me an opportunity for, to fulfill my dreams. Great. I would like to show a video. And this is a video that was put together for our upcoming event that's taking place on Wednesday, Target Giving Day. But if we can play that video, I think it speaks for itself. I'm Gretchen Van Valkenburg, Vice President of Alumni Affairs and Executive Director of the Auburn Alumni Association. And I'm excited to announce a brand new scholarship. The Alumni Board established its first need-based scholarship, which is aptly named in memory of Dr. Josetta Britton Matthews, Auburn's first African-American graduate and faculty member. We hope it will inspire, enable, and positively impact deserving students from the state of Alabama who want to pursue an Auburn degree but face a financial barrier. I really feel fortunate to have this scholarship named after my mom. Just to know that because of what she did, somebody else gets an opportunity to go to college. It's really mind-blowing. By naming the scholarship after her, you're showing that you want to continue her legacy and you want to give others the opportunity to do what she's done. This day and age, I just think it's a great step, especially for diversity and inclusion, because black women aren't praised as much as they, as they need to be. They really deserve it. Um, Josita Matthews' name and legacy really means a lot to me. She paved the way for African-American students like me to come to this institution. Like for somebody who's a first year college student in their family, like that in and of itself is really encouraging because it's like, oh my gosh, I could be like her. It makes me feel represented, I think, as in where there's not a lot of scholarships here that I feel as though I could put myself in. So having this scholarship, it makes me feel as though I'm not alone. So anyone who was able to, I would ask them to please donate to this scholarship so that students like me can continue to study here at Auburn. This Tiger Giving Day help us provide underserved high school students with the resources necessary to join the Auburn family. You may help provide the means for the next Auburn Trailblazer. Like Josetta Matthews. Like Josetta Matthews. Like Josetta Matthews. Like Josetta Matthews. Like my mom. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that is wonderful. Dr. Wright, do you call her mama? What do you call her? I call her mummy. <laughs> that is my mummy. Yes, that's, that, that is mummy. Uh, I was talking to one of my professors at Auburn, um, Dr. Rayburn, and she, she said, oh, Heidi, it's some wonderful news about mummy. She said, I remember you always called her mummy. I was like, yeah, because it, it's just, just, you talk about automaticity and having something that that's just what it is. Yeah, because the first day that I found out about her picture on the bus, uh, my my major professor was like, Heidi, I think I saw your mom's picture on the bus today. I was like, you saw mommy? No. She's like, <laughs> she's like yeah, y'all look alike. I'm pretty sure it was her. I said, I don't look like mommy. And she was like, yes, you do. And I, 
lo and behold, I'm coming up there past the train station, I mean, past the bus station, and there she is. And just, y'all, it's just amazing to have that experience when you see mm -hmm. your mother's picture on the back of an Auburn University bus. You know, it's just, God. Now, that was not the first time that you've been impressed by mommy, if I may call it that. Um, no. You, you growing up, you've shared several times just the influence that she has had on you. So please share your personal story um, growing up with her and leading up to the, the, the success that you're having now. Okay, well, uh, it's sort of like this. It's like in my family, you heard going to college before you even went to preschool. You know what I mean? It was like, um, because education has always been the key factor in empowering black people. Mm -hmm. um, so that was just something that I always heard. Um, and throughout my life as a, as a young child, my mother was going to Auburn when I was very young. And so once she went and got a master's degree and then she came back and she got a doctoral degree. So throughout all of those years, and then she worked at a college. And so throughout all those years, I always saw her doing homework and doing lessons. And so to the point that you talk about children doing what they see. So I saw her getting her homework, so I got mine. And I really cannot recall an occasion where my mom helped me with homework. I mean, you know, like, sit down, come on, let's get your lesson. I saw her doing hers, so I did mine. Mm -hmm. So children do what they see. So, you know, it was, it was and, you know, luckily I, I, I didn't struggle, you know, early on. And so um, it's just being in an environment that you're submerged in education. And my grandfather was an educator and my grandmother was an educator and my uh, grandmother's sister was an educator in California. And so you just see all of that and you just don't, you don't question it. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. it's like you, you go to school, this is what you do and you make good grades and that's what you do. And so, uh, and I can recall getting like, I guess I was probably in, we called it junior high school in my days. Uh, I got like an 86 on a test and my mama was like, or oh, I got a 90. Why didn't you get a hundred? And I was like, you know, that's a good grade. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody else got that. She was like, you're not anybody else. Just because mm -hmm. the curve, you know, just because the bar is low, that doesn't mean that you're supposed to perform at the bar level. So uh, she just always instilled that in me. So, you know, coming up, I was always in the spelling bee. I ran for a student government, you know, um, that's what, that was what you did. Education was what you did. I remember wanting to get a job in high school, you know, once I turned 16 and she was like, no. I was mm -hmm. like, but mommy, you know, there are other kids working. And then, you know, when you work in high school, you can go buy your own things. You don't have to ask your parents, you know. And she was like, no, your job is to get your education. Mm -hmm. So that is what I did and I, I couldn't wait to get my first job. And Jameer, to your credit, I would like to say that my first job was at McDonald's too. <laughs> 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 finally, and finally, once I got out of high school, my mom let me get a job, part-time job, and it was at McDonald's. So, um, but uh, yeah, that, that just was, it was just always instilled in me, guys, and I didn't know anything else, like the option to work and not go to college. Mm -hmm. was never was never an option you know that was never an option um and i do realize that perhaps everybody's not four-year college material but being that education was always instilled on you know was was instilled in me even if you do go to a community college or you go to a trade school and get something in vocation education is education mm -hmm. So, you know, I mean, uh, you know, there are some car mechanics whose salaries are pretty, pretty hefty, you know. <laughs> so um, I stand for education in, you know, on, on any level, you know. And, and you went on to receive your undergrad 
in business administration and then eventually master's and, and naturally a doctorate. Yes. And um, so you lived out exactly what was set before you by your family. I think that's, that's awesome. Congratulations. Dear uh, Dramir, I know that your area, your hometown, your high school um, has several individuals that have come to Auburn that are Auburn alum. Uh, so alumni, can you share a little bit of those names? Maybe drop a couple names and give us the examples set before you. Yeah, so um, I had, there were some students who attended Harvard, like Danica Gutierrez, as well as um, there's a student named Maya Wilder. She also received a scholarship the same year as me, um, full scholarship, and Seth Williams, the football player, probably everybody knows him. He's a uh, also another example that was um, set before me. And um, being that we both, you know, played sports together, we did track and field together and as well as football, he was just a phenomenal example for me, like showing, you know, how to work hard and how to use your abilities that you have before you. So obviously I'm not out there catching touchdowns and stuff you know, like him every Saturday, but I was able to, you know, use my stature and have the opportunity to wrestle here as well and be a part of the wrestling program here at Auburn. So. Yeah, man, that's awesome. It really is. Um, a, a life of purpose and completely focused on, on what you're doing. And again, congratulations to the success that you've had so far. There are several comments that have come through uh, Facebook Live. Tristan Spear says, so proud of you and your mom, Dr. Wright. Uh, Nita Tucker says, this couldn't be better. Dr. Wright, you're terrific. Love you. Uh, Susan Osborne line says, this is excellent. Megan Burton says, Jameer, thank you for making Auburn better by sharing your experiences. A couple more. Uh, Shakobi Burns Johnson says, Dr. Wright, thank you for your mother, the impact she made and the legacy she leaves uh, at Auburn that paved the way for me to be an AU alumna. Kami Dacus, wonderful tribute to an amazing woman. And Julie asks, do you think your mom or mommy would be surprised <laughs> to see how her legacy has expanded today? Wow, you know, it's... Uh... I just don't even know how she will know. Yes, I do. Uh, she's okay. You know, that same smile that you see when you see her with that cap and gown on, that's the smile she has. And uh, I also want to say that Nita Tucker is her sister. Oh yeah. And uh, Nita Tucker, you know, like I talk about, she, she, she too is, is, uh, is a retired educator. And uh, she uh, helped my mom type in her papers and when she was in school at Auburn. And she also helped me with my papers, particularly my dissertation. So thank you, Juanita, <laughs> Nita Tucker. But, uh, oh gosh, you know, she, I, what's, what's the word beyond elated? What's the word beyond overjoyed? Uh, yeah, 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 just just to um, know that someone is going, like I said earlier, is going to have an opportunity to get an education because of her. Um, and just, you know, wow. What a beautiful yeah, legacy. Yeah, a beautiful legacy. And uh, she probably would want me to... Uh, say, okay, Jeffrey, uh, now you know what you have to do. <laughs> and Jeffrey is my son. So she would probably, <laughs> she would probably go, okay, Great Jeffrey. Plug in. Yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely, definitely have to get that in. Uh, but, uh, you know, a, a lot of my mom's students went on beyond mm -hmm. uh, their, their grad, uh, undergraduate degrees because of her. Uh, she had quite a few who went on to law school. Mm -hmm. And so she was instrumental in getting a lot of her students to push forward and to go on in their careers. Um, you know, I want to stay on topic with that. And I think it's wonderful to know. So she was a mentor. Yes. Um, Drew Mir, I know that you, you were influenced and helped supported through AU recruiting. 
So is there an opportunity for you to share that name of that recruiter and the impact that that person had in you? And we've got another three minutes, two minutes left in the show. And but I think it's important to note just who these individuals are that have influenced you. Would you share with yes. us? Yes. So um, during my time at Bryant, um, some Auburn recruiters would regularly visit our school and visit our area and have sit down conversation with us and tell us like, you can be the next tiger, you know? And I really love that uh, phrasing. I believe, I don't remember exactly, but I remember um, there were some individuals who would regularly come to our school and stayed in contact with us. Even when I told them like, hey, I don't even have the credentials to be admitted into Auburn. They was like, well, I believe with your work ethic, I believe you can get there. and. The Auburn University Recruiting Office just did phenomenal staying in touch with me. And that's why I really felt like this was a larger part of being an Auburn Tiger and being a part of this family. That's wonderful. I'd like to share something that Gretchen Beth Dockenberg, uh, Vice President of Alumni Affairs and Executive Director of the Association, Alumni Association, shared with regards to the, the scholarship for your mother in honor of your mother, Dr. Wright. She writes, she wrote, I am proud of the Auburn Alumni Association Board of Directors demonstration of support for the university's goal of promoting diversity, equity, and inclusion among its student body. This need-based memorial scholarship will make a positive difference in the lives of undeserved students from the state of Alabama by opening the door to the educational opportunities that will allow them to pursue their educational dreams. I wanna thank both of you, Dr. Wright, Jameer, for allowing us to learn about your life, your personal stories, your family stories, the innate you that makes Auburn so special. It enriches Auburn. And so thank you uh, for being here and uh, the time that you spent gifting us a little bit about you and your stories. Next, uh, this week on Wednesday, all day, um, the Tiger Giving Day uh, will take place. 24 hours for one big family. Um, you can go to the Auburn uh, website, uh, the association website to see the, the different programs that are out there. But currently there's a live link that's available for the scholarship that we've been discussing. So please take the time, make the time, look into ways that you can give back on Wednesday. And until next time, Thank you both. War Eagle. War Eagle. War Eagle.